After Gregor Mendel made many of the ideas that we take for granted today clear, and he based those ideas on well-documented evidence, there were a whole lot of other scientists that followed in his path. They were seeking to clarify more of the inheritance patterns that were visible to humans at the time, and they were wanting to try out Mendel's ideas on more than just pea plants, so lots of other organisms. And one of the most famous of those scientists is Thomas Hunt Morgan. He and his colleagues at Columbia University worked in the early 1900s. Their lab was called the Fly Room because they were focused on the very tiny and very prolific breeder, the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster. They did all sorts of crazy things to attempt to induce mutations in these flies uh, because they wanted to have mutant flies that they could breed with wild type flies and observe the patterns. So they were trying to induce mutation and they did eventually with enough generations start to get mutations that produced visible phenotype differences and some of those were the wild type gray body compared to the mutant black body. They had a wild type red eyed fly and they induced a mutant wide eyed fly. That was one of the early mutations they saw. And another one is wing shape. So you have the normal wing shape and what they call it a vestigial wing there. So those are just some of the patterns or some of the traits that they saw and were able to watch from generation to generation. The part of their work that is relevant to our unit is the part where they use test crosses, which is just where a dominant individual was crossed with a recessive phenotype individual, and reciprocal crosses, which were crosses done to test the contribution of different genders to the overall offspring ratios. So we'll start with a test cross result that was unusual. The team had a wild type gray and normal winged fly that was heterozygous and they had a black vestigial winged fly that must have been homozygous recessive for both traits. So according to the law of independent assortment, you could form the following gametes. You get your big B, big VG, little B, big VG, big B, little VG, and little recessive for both. So four different gametes equally created, and the recessive should only give you the two recessive alleles. Put those together, and you should get a regular winged fly with a gray body, just like a parent, a black bodied fly with regular wings, a vestigial winged fly with a regular gray body, or just like the other parent, a black fly with a vestigial wing structure. You should, according to Mendelian patterns and the law of independent assortment, see this in a one to one to one to one ratio. But what they actually observed were about 900 from each of the parent genotypes or phenotypes and about 200 from the crossed or recombinant where you see one wild type and one mutant characteristic. So what's going on? Why are there so many more of the parental phenotypes and not so many of these, what we now call recombinant phenotypes. Well, what's going on is that these genes are linked. We know that there are way more genes than there are chromosomes, and so it stands to reason that a chromosome would have many genes along its length. And so recombination, where you have crossing over and you might see the little segments of the chromosome swap places with each other is going to produce genes or chromosome segments that look something like this when they're all said and done. And so normally the dominant 
body color and the dominant wing shape would be inherited together. They're like a package deal. That's the link gene. So you get, if you get one characteristic, you should get the other characteristic that is linked on the same chromosome with it. So looking back at what we saw before, you can see that the parental genotypes or the gametes that caused flies that looked like the parents' phenotypes are represented on the length of a chromosome or a chromatid that did not cross over. But on those segments that crossed over, the recombinant chromosomes, you see the rare recombinant type flies where you have a mixing of parental phenotypes represented in the offspring. And so that's why it's rare, because these genes are close together, and so often crossing over doesn't happen between them, and so they're inherited together more often than they're inherited separately. We say that any genes like this are linked. So the body color and the wing shaped are linked genes, but any genes found along the length of a chromosome are linked. The geneticists in Morgan's lab used lots of recombination frequencies. That's your total number of recombinants over your total offspring. That would be something like 400 over 2,200 for our example from before. And that gives you 0.18 and they established a new unit. They called it the MAP unit. It's also called a Sintamorgan, or lowercase c, capital M, named after Thomas Hunt Morgan himself. He gets a unit named after him. How cool is that? Um, remember that these, again, we're talking about genes that are on the same chromosome. So they don't follow the law of independent assortment. So fewer recombinants is going to mean that you have less crossing over happening, probably meaning that they're very close together on the chromosome, or more recombinants is going to give you a greater number, meaning they can recombine more often. They're further apart on the chromosome. So there's your chromosome. You would establish a zero point, and then you'd work your units from there. The longer the chromosome, the more genes, or theoretically, on that chromosome, and the more often things will recombine because of that large amount of distance for crossing over to occur. So we've created genetic maps now to arrange genes along the chromosomes. Long before there was DNA sequencing, we were able to start putting genes in locations, physical locations, on these chromosomes, these microscopic things, and we called that location of a gene a loci. So now all the genes, they've gone from being things that we weren't even sure existed, we had all these strange notions of how traits were inherited, to now being a thing that physically exists in a world at a specific location. So a quick recap here. Genes on a chromosome are considered to be linked genes. Genes are mapped onto genetic maps. Um, we use units called Sintimorgans or map units. They, these units are calculated using recombinant frequencies, and that again is helps us to quantify how often recombination or crossing over occurs. And the more crossing over you have, that means the genes are further apart. So the more far apart they are, the more often crossing over can occur. The larger your recombinant frequency, the larger your map unit, the further apart the genes are on the map. So there's your little review.